Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us. We are thrilled to be here. Uh, my name is Rebecca Maynard and I'm an assistant with the Open Education Lab at Ontario Tech University and I'm joined by my colleague Sarah Stokes who is a faculty development officer at Ontario Tech as well as the supervisor of the OE Lab and we're here today to speak about the role of students in OER creation as they move from being consumers to contributors. So this is a quick preview of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to start with an overview of the OE Lab and then move into the different ways in which students at our institution have contributed to OER creation, starting with building them up from the ground using non-disposable assignments and then moving beyond building into adaptations and advocacy. We're also going to talk a little about experiential learning and wrap up with a glimpse into the future of the open movement, both at our institution and at others. So I'd like to begin by giving you a quick bit of background about the OE Lab, um, who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Uh, at Ontario Tech, we practice tech with a conscience. And by that, I mean we aim to improve the lives of humans and the planet through the ethical application of technology. And that's exactly what we wanted to do with the OE Lab. We know that shifting to more open educational practices will benefit our students. It's the right thing to do. And we have faculty who want to do that work. But it is work. It's a lot of work. And it's also a lot to ask faculty to do on their own. The desire to create OER was there on our campus, but the capacity wasn't. And that was especially true when the lab opened in June of 2020. We were a couple of months into the COVID-19 pandemic and there was still so much uncertainty. We had faculty having to pivot to virtual teaching maybe for the first time within 48 hours. We had a student population who were losing their jobs and their internship placements that they'd been relying on very suddenly weren't going to happen anymore. So when the OA Lab started, we had two major goals in mind. First, to support the needs of our students and faculty in this uncertain time, and second, to break down the barriers preventing us from making our institution more open in the long term, beyond the pandemic. And the only way to really meet both of those goals was to start with our students. That's the defining characteristic of the OE Lab, that our OER are created with students for students. Because the needs of our students were built into the lab as a concept, we in turn needed students to have some agency and input when creating our resources. We employ our student staff through the University Works Program, which is a branch of financial aid at our institution that provides students with part-time job placements. And we wanted to be sure that we were providing them with meaningful employment as well, and we'll talk more about that shortly. But in any case, the work of our lab students directly contributes to the development of open educational practices at Ontario Tech and to resources that can be used by other students. Now, very quickly, I want to introduce some of the goals of the lab. Some of them I've spoken about already, others we're going to talk about a little bit later, but I still want to give you a general overview so you have an idea of the kind of place we want the lab to be. First, as I mentioned, we want to provide publishing support for faculty so they have the capacity to make the OER they want to make. By doing so, we can show faculty that the shift towards open doesn't have to be overwhelming. It is not impossible. It's a tangible thing we can do and have done. Our other primary goals are all student focused. We want to make sure our students are paid for their work for one, but on a larger scale, we want work at the OE Lab to be more than just a part-time job. And we'll go into more detail about what that means for us later on, but I wanted to make it clear that from the beginning, the OE Lab was conceived to be a meaningful job experience, and we strive to maintain that in everything we do. And it's important to note that we push for that meaningful, valuable work both out of and in the classroom. So because we want to extend the concept of meaningful work in that way, we need to touch on something that we're trying to encourage at Ontario Tech, which is the use of non-disposable course assignments. And in the context of OER specifically, this means using assignments to build OER, where students can create original content, whether that be writing, images, video, whatever, specifically to be used in a published OER. And assignments like this are a pretty radical departure from more traditional tests and papers for a couple different reasons. First, they are iterative. They're not just one and done. They can be constructed, reconstructed, and refined both over time and over generations of students. And in that way, non-disposable assignments create their own value. 
students are able to develop their own skills while contributing directly to the knowledge of the students that come after them. Nobody's writing a paper that someone's going to read once and then never think about again. And to give you an example of how a non-disposable assignment can be used in OER creation, I'm going to talk a bit about one of the projects we completed at our lab. So earlier this year, we published an OER called Technology in the Curriculum. And Tech in the Curriculum is a collection of written reviews of EdTech tools completed by grad students in Ontario Tech's Faculty of Education as part of their coursework. They researched and wrote their reviews as a course assignment and through the OE lab, published their original writing into this OER. So that leads us into the big question around using non-disposable assignments. Why? Why ask students to do them? And additionally, how does creating OER as part of their coursework benefit them? Well, there are several benefits. Some I've already talked about. The content they create will endure beyond the course, so these students are directly contributing to the educational experience of others, but there are more personal benefits as well. According to some of the literature, involvement in OER creation can improve a student's own learning outcomes. It increases innovation and agency of student creators and can even improve their higher order thinking. And that's a lot of information, but we can summarize it very neatly. How do students benefit from building OER with their coursework? The building is the benefit. And what I mean by that is that the benefits of the OER creation process are built into the creation process itself. We can look at tech in the curriculum as an example of how this works. In addition to the benefits I described previously, the students who created material for this book now have their names and original writing in a published resource. And something like that is valuable for any student, but especially for grad students, people who are looking for academic credits to highlight as they begin their careers. And once again, these benefits aren't confined to a single semester. Because the resource will persist and remain relevant beyond one cohort or class, future students will be able to build upon it and benefit from it in exactly the same way. So now I'm going to talk a little bit um of what we envision beyond the building of an OER in the OE lab and at Ontario Tech. So it's important to remember that um, much of the um, OER creation is actually adaptation of resources that already exist. It's one of the benefits of open. And rather than working with a textbook or another resource that is off the shelf, Customizing OER has benefits for students and faculty alike. And as Rebecca already mentioned, there's a lot of benefits that can be done in the building of an OER, but also in the remixing. And as digital natives, students are the ones who can bring a real great value to the OER ecosystem. Students possess an awareness of technology and technology tools that might otherwise be overlooked by faculty members they allow for the division of labor in the creation process, and they're able to rapidly adapt and innovate to allow for more useful and more discoverable OER. This really builds on the concept of Web 2.0, where consumption and generation of content take uh, place in the same space. Student contribution to OER can lead to greater engagement, the formation of important partnerships, and improved teaching and learning outcomes. So for their summer capstone project, a team of business students researched existing OER and actually adapted them into an open text to be used in an introductory business course at Ontario Tech. So this is um, a resource that we'd like to highlight. It's um, along with course credit, students received editorial and publishing experience, and they contribute actually to easing the financial burden of their peers who now wouldn't have to buy a new textbook. So there is a link um, to our resource there on the screen. <laughs> um, but I'd like to describe the capstone course in a bit more detail so that folks can see how it um, really directly relates to the OER process that we envision at the OE lab. Um, so this is a unique program and it offers students an opportunity to provide real world consulting services to a host business or organization located either within Durham region where Ontario Tech is located or around the world. Um, the theory and concepts used in class are actually then applied to real business issues and students provide critical analyses that deliver sound strategies and recommendations to that business. 
The Capstone Study Project provides students who have successfully completed three years of study with these opportunities to develop a comprehensive understanding of technology, the business environment, markets, and operations of real organizations through the application of theory. And they do things like developing business plans, um, operations assessments, game development, improving reporting practices, and social media. And it's an important program that brings students further into uh, involvement if they're making an OER while they're earning that course credit. So the steps that we followed um, in this, the Capstone project are really similar to what we follow in the majority of our projects, whether they are remixes, builds, or some way in between. Uh, the first is curriculum alignment, and this is a, the starting place for a lot of projects where we take the learning objectives of the course, information from the course syllabus or the course outline, the table of contents from previous resources and in consultation with the professor decide on the order of topics but also the point of view of the resource itself. Um, then we move on to resource uh, curation. This course uh, that we worked on is really interesting because while it's a first year business overview course covering things like finance, accounting, marketing and HR, our program actually has a purposeful connection to information technology built into it. And as such, conventional first year business books or even OER didn't really have the right point of view to fully support the course. So this remix process allowed us to take a variety of first year business books and combine them with IT focused resources so it better meets the needs of our students. The next step comes the book planning and it's really essential and a little bit arduous for a remix process where we have different books with different layouts of components, so different orders of introductions and examples and case studies, practice problems, uh, and the list goes on. And as a group, we really needed to work together to plan this out and make adjustments for areas where they were either different or missing entirely. Then we get to the most time intensive phase, which is the remix and writing. And it's actually the fun stage too. Um, it takes place after a lot of the, the hidden background work is completed. And this is where we fit the components together into a cohesive chapter. And finally, we edit for voice and flow. Um, this is something that maybe is overlooked a bit in the remix process because we need to make sure that the transition between the resources that we're using is seamless. And it can be hard to do, and it does require training and support, which the uh, OE Lab provides. One of the major challenges we've encountered in our time at the OE Lab is a lack of awareness about what we do, and frankly, a lack of awareness about OER in general. And that's not a new issue for people, I think. I think that's true for most initiatives like ours. So it's been a persistent question. How can we encourage our institution to engage with us so we can get more uptake and involve more people in the open movement? And one useful strategy that we found is to let our students speak for themselves. Faculty uptake is a huge part of building a sustainable OER movement, of course, but the best possible ambassadors for OER are the people who are going to actually use them. Students know what educational supports they need better than anyone does, but if they aren't a if they aren't aware of what support options are available to them, then we're not really giving them the tools they need to fully express what they need. That's why when we started looking at OER advocacy on campus, and that's both student-focused and faculty-focused advocacy, we wanted our lab students to be able to take the lead and speak for themselves. Since the OE Lab started, our students have organized and operated all of our advocacy events and programming. These events have included Textbook Broke, in which our students raised awareness of textbook prices and introduced OER adoption as a potential countermeasure. And this, these events also included OER Day, which was a more faculty-focused awareness campaign. Our students organized and ran the entire event. They planned the agenda. They found guest speakers among their past lab clients. They promoted the event. All of this, all of this while also speaking at the event themselves. And we're planning similar outreach events right now and still encouraging our students to take the lead role, partly because authentic student voices and opinions are better for creating a long lasting open movement, but also because we want our students to have some practical experience in organizing and promoting these kinds of events. And, and this really brings us back to one of the points Rebecca made earlier in the presentation, which is we envision 
the work at the lab to be more than just a part-time job. Um, we really try to offer students hands-on experience whether that is through um, one of our employment programs, through a capstone involvement, or through some other um, innovation. And we want to give them that experience with technology, with web accessibility, with project management, with event planning, and with advocacy work. Um, our students come from very different backgrounds. Um, that's, that's true of a lot of students at Ontario Tech, but very true in the OE lab. And they all have very different career goals. Um, so what we really try to make sure we do is that students have the opportunity to leave the lab with tangible transferable skills that they can use no matter where they decide to go in their career. So that brings us to the future of open and what we see as the, the next step in the evolution of the open movement at Ontario Tech but also across Ontario and across the rest of Canada. So we've been um, working in the uh, Open Education Lab since early 2020 and we've done a number of presentations and, and meetings with colleagues both within our institution and at other post-secondary institutions in Ontario and we've really seen the need for a sustainable approach to OER among many of those that we've spoken to. But the lack of experience in creating this kind of opportunity on campus has really limited folks' ability to fulfill the need. There are many areas of this kind of work that are unknown, and in the time of online pandemic teaching, trial and error isn't really a viable plan with budgets stretched to the limit. Institutions require additional sustainable means to create OER and to make employment meaningful for students in a safe way. So this is where we've looked into the creation of the Open Education Lab Network where students will gain valuable experience working with interdisciplinary teams that span across institutions with those lab network hubs built upon the Ontario Tech model housed at other institutions. And it's really what we think is a novel way for smaller institutions to gain experience with our Open Education Lab model and gain access into that sustainable way to increase OER usage on campus. We'd also like to share some of our work with you if you are interested in joining the Open Education Lab Network and we've provided some shareable files for you here. We encourage you really to, um, to follow the Open Education Lab and what we're doing at Ontario Tech University. We're happy to have you on social media or if you're interested in speaking more about the Open Education Lab, please email us at oer at ontariotechu. And finally, we're, we're so thrilled to uh, be presenting here today, so thank you so much to the organizers of TESS, um, to the multimedia teams, to the audience who's watching us today, to my colleague Rebecca, and also to all of our students at the Open Education Lab. Thank you so much.